Welcome to Hockey Wiz Talks Podcast. Today, I'll be talking about potential trade targets for the Washington Capitals. In this podcast, I talk about what the Washington Capitals need to improve upon and who they should target at the trade deadline. Heading into this season, we didn't know what to expect from the Washington Capitals. They had missed the playoffs the previous season, and many didn't know how well they would do in a very tough metropolitan division. Much of the focus was centered on Alex Ovechkin's pursuit of Wayne Gretzky's goal record, but it would mean much more if it was captured while the Capitals were still winning games, as opposed to Ovechkin seeming like he was hunting for a personal record. The offense was once considered the strength of this team, and their power play was once considered to be one of the most feared units around the NHL. But due to the core players on that unit getting older and seemingly aging a lot the past couple of years, the power play isn't as good. The goalie tandem of Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren was considered a weak point heading into the season, with how injury prone Kemper is and with their decor being mediocre. The Washington Capitals have had a much better start to the season than anticipated, but they have had issues putting the puck in the back of the net in the early going. Washington has a 12-8-2 record with only 52 goals for, which is second worst in the NHL, and 65 goals against, which is fifth best in the NHL. The results thus far have been polar opposite of expectations from fans and media, which was that this team would be able to score, but would struggle to keep the puck out of the net. Instead, it has been the complete opposite, with the Capitals being one of the worst offensive teams in the league, but also being one of the best defensive teams in the league. Through all of this, the Capitals have been hit with a myriad of injuries, including Nicholas Backstrom announcing that he would be stepping away from the game indefinitely due to hip issues, and TJ Oshie also missed some time as well. The goaltending has held up up to this point, many, but many fans are waiting for the eventual collapse in goal. And now a word from our sponsor. Check out my scouting blog at HockeyWiz777Scouting.com. Listen to my scouting blog podcast on podcasters.spotify.com backslash pod backslash show backslash HockeyWiz777Scouting. Looking at the Capitals roster, the biggest weakness of the team is that they don't get scoring from their forwards consistently beyond Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, Dylan Strom, and Tom Wilson. TJ Oshie scores when he's healthy, but the issue is, but the issue is that he's always hurt. The Capitals have some promising young players in the lineup, but it is clear that they aren't ready to contribute consistently at the NHL level. The black hole in the lineup is Anthony Mantha, who is being paid $5.7 million this season and is having a horrendous start to the season, with only 5 goals and 7 points in 18 games. His production has slipped every year with the Washington Capitals. When the Caps first acquired Mantha from the Detroit Red Wings, he was expected to be a top 6 winger, but he wasn't able to perform up to that expectation. Therefore, now they have to go out and acquire a top 6 winger. Ideally, the Capitals can work out a deal to dump Mantha's contract so they can get a major acquisition. But it would be really tough to dump Mantha's contract unless you give up assets, which Washington might not want to do. In addition to adding a top 6 winger, it would also help to add a depth winger who can slide up and down the lineup if necessary. Because of how often TJ Oshie gets injured, the Capitals need to add a depth forward for the stretch run. Ideally, the winger can play in all situations and has playoff experience. Pavel Buchnevich. Pavel Buchnevich is the player the Washington Capitals should target at the trade deadline because the St. Louis Blues are in fire sale mode and will be willing to part with anyone who isn't Robert Thomas or Jordan Cairo. Buchnevich is under contract for this season as well as the 24-25 season with a cap hit of $5.8 million per season. He's got a modified no trade clause but if he were to get a chance to play alongside Alex Ovechkin, I'm sure he would be willing to waive it. Buchnevich is a proven top 6 forward who can play left wing and right wing and would provide some much needed secondary scoring for a Capitals team in dire need of it. Adam Henrique. Adam Henrique is another player the Washington Capitals could target at the trade deadline because the Anaheim Ducks will be trying to trade away every player who is not a part of their young core. Henrique is a UFA in 2024, so there will be a long line of teams lining up to acquire him as he is a versatile forward who can play both center and wing and play in all situations. As an added bonus, Henrique has some playoff experience. Henrique could be either a third line. Henrique could either center the third line or play on the left wing on the second line. Josh Anderson and Tanner Pearson. Two players who have been on the trade block for the Montreal Canadiens are Josh Anderson and Tanner Pearson. 
Both can provide the Washington Capitals what they need in the lineup. Josh Anderson is a player you want on your team if you want to make a deep planet. Josh Anderson is a player you want on your team if you want to make a deep playoff run. While he may not be scoring a lot of goals now, he can play in all situations and would bring physical toughness to the team. Tanner Pearson is a goal scoring winger who is underutilized in Montreal, but if used correctly, he can be a solid depth scorer on a playoff team due to his Stanley Cup experience. While neither player is a difference maker at this point in their careers, they are veteran players with playoff experience and that definitely has value. Anthony Duclair since San Jose most likely will be sellers at the deadline, Washington should look to acquire a player like Anthony Duclair. Duclair is the perfect utility player to have around because, because he can play both left wing and right wing and can play anywhere in the lineup you want him to. Duclair has a $3 million cap hit and would be an awesome addition to any playoff team. Check out my hockey blog at hockeywithtalkshockey.blogspot.com. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at hockeywith777. This is the projected lineup with Pavel Buchnev. The first line is Dylan Strom centering Alex Ovechkin and Tom Wilson. The second line is Evgeny Kuznetsov centering Pavel Buchnevich and TJ Oshie. The third line is Connor McMichael centering Alexi Protis and Anthony Mantha. The fourth line is Nick Dowd centering Beck Melenstein and Nicholas Abe Kubel. The first D pair is Martin Faravari and John Carlson. Second D pair is Joel and Munson and Nick Jensen. Third D pair is Rosman Sandin and TVR. Goalies are Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren. This is the projected lineup with Adam Henrique. The first line remains the same. The second line is Evgeny Kuznetsov centering Connor McMichael and TJ Oshie. The second line is Adam Henrique centering Alexi Protis and Anthony Mantha. The fourth line remains the same. Defense and goaltending remains the same. This is the projected lineup with Anthony Duclair. The first line remains the same. The second line is Evgeny Kuznetsov centering Anthony Duclair and TJ Oshie. The third line remains the same as in the first lineup. The fourth line remains the same. Defense and goaltending remains the same. Here are the projected lineups with Josh Anderson and Tanner Pearson. The first line remains the same. Second line is Evgeny Kuznetsov, Tanner Pearson, and TJ Oshie. Third line is Connor McMichael, Alexi Protis, and Josh Anderson. Fourth line remains the same. Defense and goaltending remains the same. Listen to Hockey Wiz Talks podcast on Podbean and Spotify. Check out my travel channel at youtube.com backslash at Hockey Wiz Travels. The Washington Capitals are a team that is kind of stuck because they have a lot of money tied up on over-the-hill players. But fortunately, Backstrom will be on long-term IR for the remainder of the season. So they can go out and pick up a player or two at the deadline. In my next podcast, I'll be talking about potential trade targets for the Arizona Coyotes.